Hi. Today we are going to be learning a little more about Meteor Publish and Subscribe than the basic tutorials explain. So you should be familiar with the basics of Publish Subscribe and we'll do a quick review and then show you how to push it um, into, into particularly directions where you might be wanting to create a publication that does not come from MongoDB. Okay, So we'll be publishing raw numbers as our example. So for quick review of the setup here, we have a basic template. This is right from a Meteor Create. And this uses a helper. And it expects an object that has a number field so that it selects that number field off of the object. And it just iterates through them. The helper numbers is created here. Numbers helper returns all things found in something called a numbers collection. We'll see a little more later that numbers collection find is not the actual records, but a cursor to the records. And this uh, numbers collection is defined here, where, well, in the client, um, you subscribe to a publication called numbers, and then we create a collection of the same name numbers and assign it to window.numbers collection. And then here's the publication that fills that. Now let me show you this windows numbers collection. You can query directly from here. And if I just call find on it, what is this? It's a local collection. It's, it's not the records. I thought it might be um, what we, to see the records, what we could do is then call fetch on those records. And it shows us that objects came back. They have IDs and then they have fields. All right, now to make this look a little bit uh, easier on the eye, if we're only interested in the number field that's being displayed there, we can pluck from the numbers collection results the field number. And that'll give us exactly the array that's in there. So, um, how do those numbers get into the publication if there's not a Mongo table of them? Well, on the server, we publish a collection of numbers. Remember, we subscribed to numbers. And I'll explain the prolifer proliferation of this word appearing all over the place. Um, and we'll actually dry it up in certain steps. But we create a publication called numbers. And in the function that defines the publication, we call this dot added a number of times. And this dot added takes, <laughs> what do you expect? The word numbers, again, it takes an ID, and then it defines the object to return. And when you're done adding things to a collection, you call this dot ready. And that doesn't mean you can't add more records to the publication, just that this net represents a good initial snapshot. So if you were publishing 100 numbers, you might want to call ready every 20 of them, right? So for pagination purposes, ready is there for you. So that's pretty much um, the server side of pu publishing a set of freely defined objects. And to show you that this is live, we can go and change the definition of that subscription and uh, new numbers appear. Again, same items that you can access in the console as through the helper. Okay, so that is basically what you can read about in the Meteor docs. There, this is almost straight from the Meteor documentation. But I'm going to start showing you some things you can do if you're implementing these custom functions yourself. One is that it is considered a good practice to capture this early on in a variable. And then throughout your publication, call the same methods on that variable that you've defined. Sometimes you'll see this variable defined as self, but I like to give it a proper name. And I'll show you why it's a good idea to do that later. But for now, just um, take my word for it, and we'll say that it is in the Meteor Development Group style guide. The Meteor core team uses this practice, and it's a good idea. 
you'll see another more specific reason why later. But if we save this, you see that the publication works identically, even though we've changed the variable name. Now, a publication that returns the same set of data, no matter who is subscribed to it, and um, no matter you know, what time of day it is, uh, is not that useful. So the next thing you'll see happening in subscriptions and publications is the taking, the accepting of a parameter, up to. All right, so let's say that we can subscribe to the numbers up to 10. Um, and the client will now, in addition to passing the name of the subscription, pass the number that we want to go up to. To make this work, there is a function in the underscore library called range, and we can start from 1 and continue to up to. Now, in fact, if our up to is 10, range will stop at 9. So to avoid being annoyed by 10 being missing, we'll just add 1 there. And then we'll call for each, which takes a function. And that function receives a variable n for every item in the range. So with this, we can dry up our code, publish these numbers, and get rid of that. And hopefully, with this being 10, and this being up to, and this being the range, we will get a few more numbers. Wonderful, lovely. Now here is where you'll see, I want you to, if you, if you know this in JavaScript, I want you to explain the following results. I'll hit save here. And when we look, well, first we see the records are gone. And then if we look in the um, log, it says object object has no method added. This dot added. Well, remember that this does not behave the same way as other variables. When we have a function, this refers to the this for this function. If that doesn't make sense, I'm not going to explain it too much, but that's uh, a good reason why you want to capture this so that you're always referring to the publication. At this point, let me show you a tool that you can use to investigate the communication going on between the client and the server. You can go into the console, not the one that's running your Meteor server, but I usually have one right next door to it. And if you have installed the wonderful DDP tools by Chris Mather, you should be able to do the following. DDP port 3141, it has to match your running port. I think it defaults to 3000. And then you can say subscribe numbers, and you can give it uh, four. And this will do the same thing as doing Meteor subscribe in the client, except it'll let you see the messages that are going forth. So here you see under an ID one, the object number one. Um, you see a few other messages transpiring, but most importantly are these added messages and then the ready message. Okay, this can allow you to snoop on the conversation and you'll get different results here than here, not only because you're passing different parameters to the publication, but because you can see that this is a session ID and there is a way to show you the session ID in the browser. I'm going to admit that, omit that for now. Um, ah, okay, nah, I'll, I'll, I'll actually show you something. It's, it's, it's a little bit harder. What you have to do is go to the network pane, go to the WebSocket uh, tab, and because I'm running this in a small browser, uh, it's going to be a little bit cramped. Um, there's a WebSocket tab, and then under here you have frames, and gosh, this is really cramped, and that's why I wasn't going to show it in this, in this demo, but trust me, there are those messages, if I could scroll this at all, you would see those messages 